This morning on Wake Up With Hope, Ronnie Mills will be with us and we will have a moving devotional. Plus, we'll have a recipe for rainbow hummus. You don't want to miss it. Good morning, friends, and welcome to Wake Up With Hope. It is the start of the weekend. Yes. Yes. And we are excited to begin this weekend with you. Have you had a good week? We surely hope you have. Send us a message on our official Hope Channel Facebook page and let us know if Wake Up With Hope has made a difference in your week. Well, here we are again, ready to start our program, and we're delighted to share the hope of Jesus with you this morning. That's right, in today's program, we're gonna feature life-changing news from Ronnie Mills. Also, we have a unique rainbow hummus mm. recipe from renowned chef Jeremy Dixon. And of course, we will have a devotional that is sure to get your weekend started on the right foot. But first, we have this day in history. On July 8, 1951, Paris, the capital city of France, celebrated turning 2,000 years old. In fact, a few more candles would have technically been required on the birthday cake, as the City of Lights was most likely founded around 250 BC. Paris is home to some 2 million residents, with an additional 10 million people living in the surrounding metropolitan area. The city retains its reputation as a center for food, fashion, commerce, and culture. Paris also continues to be one of the world's most popular tourist destinations, renowned for such sites as the Eiffel Tower, Luxembourg Gardens, and the Louvre Museum, home to Leonardo da Vinci's painting, Mona Lisa. Paris truly is the city of lights, and we had the joy of visiting Paris on our honeymoon. That's right, that's <laughs> right. That was a special time, yes. that was a special and time. And I remember seeing the Louvre, and we saw the Mona Lisa, yeah. and Eiffel Tower, it was yeah. beautiful. And you know what, honey, I didn't see any of that because I was so captivated oh. by your love. That's right. <laughs> you know, Matthew 5, chapter 5, verse 14 says, to Christians everywhere, you are the light of the world a city that is on a hill that cannot be hidden. How can we share our light? How can we be the light of the world? You know, Jesus gives us a hint in Matthew chapter 25 when he says to feed the hungry, clothe the naked, visit the sick, the oppressed, and the imprisoned. All of these have one thing in common. Instead of focusing on ourselves, we are looking at the needs of those around us. That is the key. The key to being the light of the world, friends. And it may be a kind word, a listening ear, or a smile to someone who feels down or discouraged. So as you go about your day today, we encourage you to ask God to open your eyes and to show you how you can be a blessing and a help to someone in need today. Amen. Are you looking for a creative and still delicious way to sneak in some extra healthy goodness in your family's diet? Well, we've got you covered. Chef Jeremy Dixon joins us to share an amazing rainbow hummus recipe that is sure to become a family favorite. I'm going to show you now how to make a wonderful dipping platter with three different colored hummuses, rainbow hummus. So to start with to make hummus, we want to use chickpeas. So we're going to put the equivalent of two cans of chickpeas in, and then we're going to put in four cloves of garlic, one of the most important ingredients for hummus is lemon juice. So we're going to add at least six tablespoons of lemon juice. We're going to add a teaspoon of salt and tahini. And we're going to add four tablespoons. One, two, three, four. We're going to add some water. So around about half a cup of water. Let's blend it. Great. So we've got this base hummus here, and we're going to turn it into three different colours. So we're going to tip out two thirds and leave ourselves with a third. And the first hummus we're going to make, we're going to make a pumpkin hummus, butternut hummus. So I've pre-roasted some butternut pumpkin. We're just going to throw this in with that hummus that we've got there. 
and this will make hummus number one. Add some cumin as well, just half a teaspoon, just to give it a bit of a Middle Eastern flavour. Blend that up. There you go, you may need to add some water just to make it the right consistency. We're just going to tip it into our bowls here. So here's the first hummus, the pumpkin hummus. So we're going to pour back in some of our original hummus and add some frozen peas. We're going to add some fresh parsley to help it become really nice and green. Give this a bit of a blend. So we'll put the green pea hummus in there. Look at that. And now we're going to make the red hummus. Put in some of our original hummus back in. And we're going to put some beetroot, just standard canned beetroot, into the mix. There you go, I'll just drain that off into here. Put that in there with the, the hummus and blend it around. And you have a lovely, wonderful pink hummus. And now we're going to add other extra exciting things to the board. So we're going to start with some rice crackers, got some nice oat crackers. It's a combination of fruit and dipping things. And there you go, there's our rainbow hummus. We've got a pumpkin hummus, beetroot hummus, pea hummus, with a wonderful fruit platter, um, with crackers and yummy things to snack on. Great for any party, great for Christmas, and a great healthy way to impress your friends. Are you looking forward to trying this unique recipe? It sure sounds good to me. Send us a message on our official Hope Channel Facebook page and let us know how it turns out for you. And if you're enjoying today's program, don't forget to visit us at hopetv.org slash wake up and share us with friends and loved ones. When we return, Ronnie Mills will be joining us to reveal exclusive Hope Channel updates. Welcome back everyone. This morning we have Ronnie Mills from our very own Hope Channel here to share some special announcements with us. Good morning Saints and happy Friday. The times we live in have really given a new appreciation of the necessity of prayer. And I'm so excited to have with me today the co-host of Hope Channel's Let's Pray broadcast, Pastor Chris Holland and Ms. Season Cromwell. Welcome Pastor Chris and Season. Hello, hello. Good to see you, Ronnie. Glad well, season here. for anyone who's never heard of Let's Pray, what is this TV show about? You know, it really just is a, an, an amazing opportunity to gather together as the body of Christ and pray. But officially, it is a global interactive prayer program that um, we take about 30 minutes um, each time we go live and we lift up the requests of the community. And these requests are pouring in through multiple platforms. Um, and if you know the community has never heard of it, come join us because it really is just a beautiful, powerful time together. Amen, worldwide and on many platforms. Well. Pastor Chris, how do you make sure that this show is not impersonal? Well, I tell you, Ronnie, the most important thing is that the show provides a number of avenues to interact. First, people can call in and talk to our prayer partners. Our prayer partners pray with people. They counsel with people. They can call a prayer partner anytime they want, 877-7-LET'S-PRAY. And that keeps it very you know, interactive with the audience. But then in addition to that, Ronnie, we have our prayer room, which is at hopetv.org forward slash let's pray, where people can leave their prayer requests, they can leave their praises. But probably my most favorite way of interacting is on Facebook. We go live on Facebook and there in the chat, we interact with people from all over the world, Ronnie. It is so exciting. In addition, Ronnie, you provide prayer requests for me from a number of our viewers. And so it makes it very personal because we speak to people by name, specific prayer requests, and we pray for those requests right there live during Let's Pray. Wow, that's beautiful. Their prayers are prayed to God by the individual name. 
not big one big group prayer, but each person as an individual before the throne of God. Amen. And speaking of Amen. prayer season, of the many prayers that have come in to Let's Pray, do any stand out in your mind that God has answered? Oh, absolutely. Um, it's almost too many, do you know? Um, so I would like to say first before I answer that there are multiple styles of relationships that we have with other people's prayer requests. For example, we have been journeying for a long time long time with uh, Chaplain Brad Ray and Christy Ray out of Australia over their baby girl, Imogen, mm -hmm. who has a very rare form of cancer. But we see God's faithfulness in sustaining them through this time. We get some positive reports. She is still on that journey as a baby girl. However, the father has continued to involve this community and uh, given us an opportunity to be co-laborers and to support this family in longevity. Um, we also have a, a, a miraculous overnight healing from a little girl named Aurora who's left uh, excuse me her right arm it's called a brachial plexus injury when she was born was completely zero movement we prayed and the next day that little munchkin's arm was all over the place it was a miracle and finally just recently in the last few weeks we've had a new family member in let's pray his name's JD and JD had COVID-19 mm -hmm. lost his father and I believe his grandfather all over the same weekend and then then, family, he lost his job. Mm -hmm. His comment just last night on the program in that Facebook thread that Pastor Chris had mentioned was, I don't know where I would be without this prayer community because we have just been loving on him. And not just Pastor Chris and myself. This community is consistently reaching out to each other, praying for one another. It's truly the place where you don't have to pray alone. Amen. Amen. Pastor Chris, there may be someone today who's watching Wake Up With Hope, and this is the first time they've heard of Let's Pray. Please let them know what days and times they can tune in so they no longer will have to pray alone. Hey, people can just tune in Monday through Thursday, 8 p.m. Eastern Time to 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time. It is rebroadcast several times throughout the day but 8 p.m. Eastern Time to 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time, Monday through Thursday. Well, thank you, Pastor Chris and Season, for blessing us today by being on Wake Up With Hope and letting our audience know they don't have to pray alone. And to ensure that no one ever again has to pray alone or face these unique times in despair, please call in your financial support at 1-888-446-7388. Again, that's 1-888-446-7388 or donate online at hopetv.org slash donate. Again, that's hopetv.org slash donate. God bless you for your support. Thank you, Ronnie. Friends, don't go anywhere. We're going to have an inspiring message just for you right after the break. Welcome back to Wake Up With Hope. Thank you for making us part of your weekend. It's now time for our devotional thought. Good morning. Once again, thank you for joining us as we wake up with hope. I'm Dr. Carlton Bird, Speaker Director, Breath of Life Television Ministries, and I'm glad you're joining us today. We're gonna share with you, but let's pray and let's talk to our God. Father, once again, great is your faithfulness to each and every one of us. Another day where we can see your sunshine. Another day where we can breathe your air. Another day where we can praise your name. Bless us today and give us hope. In Jesus' name, amen. In our last episode, we talked about excellence and we read from Colossians chapter 3, verses 23 and 24. The King James Version says, And whatsoever ye do, do it heartily, as to the Lord and not unto men, knowing that the Lord and of the Lord ye shall receive the reward of the inheritance, for ye serve the Lord Christ. But remember, I also said I like the Good News translation. It says, whatever you do, work at it with all your heart, as though you were working for the Lord and not for people. Remember that the Lord will give you as reward what he has kept for his people, for Christ is the real master you serve. You also remember that I shared with you a story, and it went something like this. There was a man who once visited a church under construction. 
where he saw a sculpture making an image of Jesus. He noticed a similar image lying nearby, and so surprised, he asked the sculptor, do you need two statues of the same image? The sculptor, without looking up, said, no, we only need one, but the first one got damaged earlier. The man then examined the image and found no apparent damage, so he said to the sculptor, well, where's the damage? The sculptor, still busy, never looking up, said, there's a scratch on the nose of the image. The man then asked, well, where are you going to install the new image? The sculptor then said, I'm going to install it on a pillar 20 feet high in the air. Well, the man said, if the image is that far up in the air, who's going to know that there's a scratch on the nose anyway? The sculptor stopped his work, looked up at the gentleman and smiled and said, I will. The moral of the story is this. The desire to excel has nothing to do with whether someone else appreciates it or not. But excellence is a drive from the inside and not the outside. Excellence is not for someone else to notice. But excellence is for your own satisfaction. Now, our first point on achieving excellence, you will remember, was in the belief that we ought to know God's purpose for our lives. God has a plan for us. God has a purpose for us. And if we're going to achieve excellence, we have to operate in God's purpose for our lives. You will remember that's point number one, purpose. But now we move today to point number two, which is preparation. If you're going to achieve excellence, you have to prepare. You will never achieve what you're not prepared to handle. And every day you wake up, you have to realize that this day is filled with possibility. It's filled with potential. And procrastination is your enemy because procrastination wants to stifle your growth and keep you from obtaining excellence. But God has called us to be the head and not the tail. The world around us is moving and it's progressing. And as people of God, we must also move and progress. We can't be in the same place we were in 10 years ago, struggling with the same issues we had 10 years ago. Too many of us have motion, but we don't have any movement. But we must be prepared. We have to be lifelong learners. We have to further our education, and that's not just continuing education or professional development. That's good, but a part of education is experience, exposure, and enhancement. In other words, you can't sit back and let the world get educated, exposed, and enhanced, and think you don't have to better yourself. You know, it's interesting because a lot of people in my profession, in ministry, talk about they've been called. There's a calling on my life. But then they don't want to go to school. So I tell people all the time, just because you've been called to preach doesn't mean you don't have to study to preach. You still have to study. You still have to prepare. I tell them, you're not going to go and sit and go to a doctor who's talking about, I've been anointed. God's given me an anointing for heart surgery. Just lay down on the bed and the Spirit of God is going to tell me where to go. No, you're not going to do that. You're not going to do that because you want to see a degree. You want to see some training. You want to see a diploma and a license on the wall. You're not going to even go to a dentist who's saying, the Spirit of God is upon me and the Spirit of God hath anointed me to go and to do this root canal. No, no, no. You have to have some training. You have to bring some integrity to what you're talking about. You have to continue learning. You have to be prepared. Your value is increased based on your knowledge. I often hear young people when they talk about receiving low wages on a job they might be working on, they'll say, they don't pay me enough. But I tell them, you have no control over what they pay you because you refuse to increase your value. But when you increase your value, you make yourself a commodity where they need you. Your situation won't dictate to you, but you'll dictate your situation. Friends, we must prepare ourselves. We must prepare ourselves for not only the world to come, but we have to prepare ourselves for this world too, because it was Jesus who said, occupy till I come. Prepare. Don't wait for something to happen. Make it happen. Prepare. Number one, purpose. Number two, Preparation. And these two steps are there to help us achieve excellence. Excellence can be achieved if you risk more than others think is safe, love more than others think is wise, 
Dream more than others think is practical and expect more than others think is possible. Know your purpose and prepare. Remember the words of Colossians 3, 23 and 24. Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as though you were working for the Lord and not for people. Remember that the Lord will give you as a reward what he has kept for his people. Christ is the real master you serve. And friends of mine, in the end, I don't know about you, but I'm looking forward to hearing him say, well done. May God bless you as today we pursue excellence. Thank you so much for that inspiring devotional thought this morning. And friends, thank you for watching Wake Up With Hope. If you would like to learn more about us, check out our website at hopetv.org slash wake up. You'll also find some really good content there about all kinds of different things. And again, that website is hopetv.org slash wake up. And guess what? We will be back here on Monday morning looking for you. We will start the week with Voice of Prophecy sharing a morning devotional. We will also feature exclusive segments that you don't want to miss. We hope you start your new week right here. And if you enjoyed our devotional thought today and you love the study of God's Word, please visit us at hope.study for your free Bible study guides. And before we say goodbye for the week, we have a Bible promise to share with you. Today's Bible promise comes from Proverbs chapter 3, verse 6. In all your ways, submit to Him, and He will make your paths straight. Amen. Friends, we hope you have a wonderfully blessed weekend, praising God for His wondrous grace and mercy over us. Amen. Let's pray together. Dear Father in heaven, today, Lord, we begin this day with a lot of encouragement. How thankful we are for programs like this, to be able to fill our minds with good and inspiring content. And Lord, we don't want it to keep it just in our minds. We want it to go deep into our hearts so that we can walk this day with you and fall in love with you even more and more as we see you work in our lives today. So thank you, Father, for answering our prayers. In Jesus' name, amen.